Now the last thing I want to set up on my data center server is a location for Git repositories for me to store the code that I work on. And this installation is going to be a little bit strange compared to my other ones because it is already installed on the machine. Now, most systems, Mac OS, uh, maybe Windows, uh, Ubuntu, they come with the Git software pre-installed. If that's not the case for your system, just use whatever package manager you have to install Git. Now, I want these to be in a specific location, and that is a top-level folder that I created called repositories. And in here, I have my own organizational method that I just have the alphabet for folders. And what I'm going to need to do here is basically just start using Git. And since it's already installed, it's ready to go. Now, there's going to be two aspects to this. One is the server side, and the other is the client side, my MacBook. And what I'm going to want to do first is to create a bare Git repository on the server. So if I want to create a test repository, let's go to T, and we are going to make a directory called test. We'll go into test, and we're going to say git init dash dash bare. And this is going to create the server side repository. So it has initialized the empty git repository where I have asked it to. And now what I can do is open my IDE. I'm going to use Xcode, but you can use anything you want. And I'm going to create a new Xcode project. And this is going to be a command line tool. And we're just going to call it test. And everything there is fine. Now, if you're doing a Python project or some other language, you can actually still use Xcode. I just use C++ as default. And then when you create your files, you just add them as you would. So we'll hit next here. I'm just going to save it on the desktop. And it's automatically going to create a Git repository for me. So all I'm going to need to do is start accessing the command line from that repository. And if it does not, if your IDE does not do this by default, then I'll show you how to create one anyway. So I'm going, actually, let's go ahead and not do that. That way I can show you. So we're going to create that. And now we have our project, which just has this main.cpp and the, the default files in here. And if we look on my desktop, we can see the folder there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new window here. And we'll go to my desktop. And then we're going to go to, and we'll list. And I do want it to do that. OK, so now what you can see is that the only files in here are test and test.xcode project. And the reason for this is that I told it not to create the Git repository. If it had done that, there would be some additional files here, but I didn't tell it to do that. So what I'll do is in my command line, I'll just say git init. This is the same as the git init bare on the server side, but I don't want it to be bare on this side. And so now I can say git status, and there are no commits yet. So what I'm going to do is just add all of these files to the queue. And so I can just say git add dot. And now I can say git status again. And we can see that all of the files have been added. So now they're all in green. So what I can do is now say git commit dash m for message. And then I'm just going to say initial commit. And we have committed our first commit to this Git repository. But it does not exist yet on the server. So if I go back here and list what is in the server, none of those files exist. So what I need to do is add it as a remote repository. So I can just say git remote add. I want to name it. So I'm going to say origin. And that's usually just the default name for these remote repositories. Usually origin is the name of them, but you might have other names. You can actually name it whatever you want. And now I'm going to type in the address of the server on my network. So that's just your IP address. So 192.168, whatever you want it to be. And in my case, I have set up host names on this computer. So we'll actually recognize library.homodeus.us, or not us, local. 
And now I need to put a colon and the path to the folder that I created the bare repository in. And you can look here, that is slash repositories slash t slash test. So I'm going to say slash repositories slash t slash test. And now I can say git push origin main. And main is the name of the branch that I'm currently on. Some people have this main branch as master or main. Xcode by default will create the branch main, and so that's what I'm going to use. And it may be the case actually that we're going to see an error here. And yes, indeed. And the problem here, I believe, if we do git branch dash v, yes, so it has gone for the name master for this default one. So if I had used Xcode to automatically generate this, the name of it would be main, but instead git is doing master by default, so we'll just change that name. So we can say git push origin master. And it's going to ask for my SSH key. And now it has pushed this to the remote repository. So now all of my files, they might not actually show up in here. Yeah, they don't actually since this is a bare repository. But I can now actually, for example, let's say, let's go back to my desktop environment, clear the screen, let's close Xcode, and let's delete that. So now that it is gone from my computer, what I can do is actually get it back through my remote repository. So I can say git clone, and then I'll put in library.homodeus.local colon slash repositories slash t slash test. And now it will clone it. So now if I go back to my desktop, you can see the folder has returned with all of the files in it. And for me, this is an excellent way to keep my development environment nice and clean. I can have a working directory like my desktop or just my documents folder that have the repositories that I'm working on right now. But if I'm not working on them, I can just push them to the remote repository, delete them from my workstation, and I will only have the files on my computer that I'm actually using. Plus, it keeps all of the records of changes that I've made, and it'll have the branching capabilities, and everything like that. So Git is really an excellent way to keep your workstation clean and to keep your projects well organized. All right, so we all know how this part works. If this video was useful to you, please hit the like button. It helps me grow the channel, and it'll help other people find the video. Also, this is part of a larger project where I'm trying to build a company starting with just three old laptops. So if you're interested in seeing how I do that, you can hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get notifications when I upload a new video. So thank you for watching.